hello and good morning everyone so now today we will be discussing we are for moving forward in the gram negative bacteria section into the page 142 usmle step 1 2021 microbiological section so initially we have in the previous lecture we have talked about this gram negative bacteria on which gram negative pinks that are gram negative bacteria that are pink in color that was divided into cocci and bacilli group in the cocci there was only few coccus that you need to uh, remember and that is nigeria and morexella among the nigeria there are only two species nigeria meningitis and nigeria gonerii and they were able to uh, <coughs> differentiated on the basis of the maltose fermentation you know maltose m for the nigeria m so this m and m we can remember as the nigeria meningitis ferment the maltose whereas the other doesn't that in that way we can remember so there was a about the cocci then there was a bacilli group in bacilli group it has been divided into three that is coco bacilli true bacilli and curve rod in the coco bacilli we have the hemophilus influenzae acinobacter and ella group that is bordetella prasurella brucella and francisella group then we have the curve rod like campylobacter jejunum vibrio cholerae and helicobacter pylori they all were oxidase positive and they can be differentiated on the basis of their different characteristic point and there was a true bacilli which was actually a very important and they can be divided on the basis of this lactose fermenter and then among the lactose fermenting that the after lactose fermenter they will produce the acid in the acid the accumulation of acid will change the ph of the media and since there is an indicator so there is change of the ph will detect by indicator and there will be the pink color so the organism that appear pink color in a mcconkey agar after 16 to 18 hour of incubation then you will find this lactose fermenting E. coli lactose fermenting bacteria that are E. coli Klebsiella enterobacter cytobacter and Seresia. they can be remembered as formula chick this chick c e e k c e e k that is cytobacter enterobacter Seresia coli and Klebsiella so these were the lactose fermenting bacteria there was lactose non fermenting bacteria that is pale in color white in color and that belongs to the pseudomonas burkholderia salmonella proteus sigella and yarsinia and they can be further divided by a test known as the oxidase by which in which the pseudomonas and burkholderia are positive whereas salmonella proteus sigella and yarsinia was negative they can be further divided this um, lactose non fermenter oxidase negative bacteria this salmonella proteus sigella and yarsinia can be further divided by on the basis of the h2s production and that gas can be gas is produced on tsi agar by the salmonella and proteus organism and sigella and yarsinia doesn't produce this gas so sigella and yarsinia are lactose non fermenter oxidase negative h2s production negative and in this way we can differentiate other each and every bacteria of the medical important bacteria of the gram negative one so we are further moving towards uh, to one page number 142 where we will discuss about this nigeria species so nigeria are the from here you have to at least know nigeria are the gram negative coco bacilli no coco this is cocci you can see so they are gram negative bacteria that is cocci okay and they can be they have the two species nigeria gunnery and nigeria meningitis and the, from the previous uh, chart uh, information we can know that they are the aerobic diplococci and they can be differentiated by one test and that is maltose formation so maltose formation test is positive in nigeria meningitis whereas negative for nigeria gonerii so that information will be very important for their differentiation okay now moving forward like nigeria gonerii are the gram negative diplococci they are metabolized glucose and produce immunoglobin a protease contain lipo oligosaccharide with a strong endotoxin activity so uh, we can we can ac actually move for, uh, towards their kaplan book and see what are the point that needs to be remembered so we can see over here okay so this is the we are talking about the nigeria group so nigeria meningitis let's just start from the nigeria meningitis and then we'll go from the nigeria gonadi so nigeria species both are here nigeria meningitis and nigeria gonadi meningitis they have capsule gonadi doesn't have my nigeria meningitis vaccine is there nigeria gonadi doesn't have the port of entry for nigeria meningitis is respiratory whereas nigeria gonadi will cause gonadia that is the disease of the gi tract so genital the glucose ferment both ferment the glucose but in case of the maltose only nigeria meningitis m for m i am repeating again and again so maltose fermentation for nigeria meningitis only 
and about the drug resistant nigeria meningitis is very drug resistant whereas gonorrhea that is common for drug resistant now coming to the nigeria meningitis distinguished features are they are gram negative and they are kidney bean shaped you know your structure of the kidney so they appears as a kidney bean shaped diplococci they are oxidase positive they have the large capsule that can be detected by the latex agglutination test in the uh, csf nigeria meningitis capsule antigen in the csf they grow on the chocolate agar you have heard about the blood agar macanke agar and then chocolate agar they grow only on chocolate agar not on the blood agar and they additional require the five percent carbon dioxide so they are capnophilic so they they are philia towards the carbon dioxide level so increase of the carbon dioxide cause the increase yield in the growth of this organism on chocolate agar they form maltose in contrast to the gonococci which i have repeatedly saying their reservoir is human nasopharynx transmission via the respiratory droplets so they leads to the um, they mainly cause the meningitis okay so there is a respiratory droplet oropharyngeal colonization is spread to the meninges via the blood stream disease occur only in the small percent of the colonized individual the pathogenesis is very important and the path for pathogenesis they have the certain virulence factor like polysaccharide capsule every organism that has the capsule inhibit the phagocytosis and the bacteria survive inside our body otherwise our body our immune cells will easily capture that bacteria and kill them the bacteria has this polysaccharide capsule that prevent our killing mechanism our phagocytic mechanism okay so there is another iga protease that allows the oropharyngeal colonization i have already if you have no, we have not discussed we'll discuss in this uh, immunological chapter the immunoglobin a that is the uh, among the five one important immunoglobin is immunoglobin a they are usually present about uh, present on as a paste as a layer on our mucosal membrane the mucosal membrane of your gi tract mucosal membrane of your respiratory tract mucosal membrane of your genitourinary system they everywhere there is the layer of this immunoglobin a and those organisms which has this immunoglobin a proteases what they will do they will break down that layer and then can easily enter into inter, get exposed to our epithelial cell then enter into our cell and then they go cause infection they cause colonize over there because they have the ability they have the enzyme to break down that immunoglobin which is a protective layer in all of the mucous membrane the mucous membrane gi tract respiratory tract as well as genitourinary urine tract so those organism which has iga protease they can easily cause the respiratory tract or gi tract or genitourinary urine tract infection or in a uh, in another way you can say that organism which cause infection to the gi tract or respiratory tract or to the genitourinary urinary tract they need this immunoglobin a protease enzyme otherwise they will not able to cause us the infection so this bacteria has immunoglobin a proteases so they can easily invade our respiratory tract protection they have the endotoxin that is lipoglycosaccharide that is responsible for fever septic shock in meningococcemia and overproduction of the outer membrane so we know all gram negative bacteria have the lipo lps and among this they have lipo polysaccharide not like oligosaccharide and they all have the endotoxic activity so they also have the pili and outer membrane protein in important in ability to colonize and invent the lack of there is an additional point the lack of complement component that is known as the mac complex c5 to c9 predisposed to the bacteremia so those portion we have deficiency we have already deficient due to inherent or any other problem then in those portion this bacteria will not be easily killed and there will be the bacteria everywhere in the blood so what are the point to be note, noted oxidase is the cytochrome oxidase test fluoride colony with the phenyl diamine in the presence of oxidase phenyl phenylalanine diamine turns black rapid test measure oxidase negative gram negative groups is enterobacteria so this is the oxidase positive this is a just a name of the enzyme that is necessary to understand why oxid what is the oxidase test actually then uh, this meningococcal is a gram negative diplococci in the csf young adult with meningitis abrupt onset of sign of endotoxic endotoxin toxicity so these are the clinical feature of meningitis now meningitis and meningococcemia there is the abrupt onset sudden onset of the fever chills malice prostration and rash that is generally petechial and rapidly decline so patient may develop fever chill malice prostration rash in fulminant case there will be rechymosis dic shock coma and death that is known as the waterhouse federation syndrome so 
That is the one complication in Nigeria meningitis, not gonadi. That is known as the Waterhouse Federation syndrome, where there will be the adrenal crisis, and that leads to the DIC and shock. So, patient may go into the shock, may develop the disseminated intravascular coagulation, even coma and death. Then you have to understand the patient has Nigeria meningitis infection, and that has been complicated and gone into the Waterhouse Federation syndrome. How we can diagnose this? Since this is a infection of your central nervous system meninges so you need to do the gram strain of the csf on the csf you will find gram negative diplococci so csf you find a gram negative diplococci and another you can do the pcr in the pcr you can detect this gram gone nigeria meningitis and as well as there is another rapid test that is not the latest agglutination test where we can detect the capsular antigen of this bacteria in this three way we can diagnose the bacteria in the csf and confirm it other way other ways will be we can even culture the csf and in the chocolate agar they will grow this organism and even then we can further move on okay treatment will be the ampicillin and ceftriaxone for neonates cefotaxime and ceftriaxone with or without vancomycin for children and adult there is a vaccine available the vaccine is conjugate vaccine for ywu135 c and a uh, strain and the recombination for serotype B prophylaxis to the close contact people with the rifampicin or ciprofloxacin. So, a person who has get exposed to the meningococcus patient, the nasal meningitis patient, they have the fever, rash all over the body. You have got got exposed to this. You know that there is a an deadly complication known as the Waterhouse Fredrickson syndrome due to this infection of nasal meningitis. They will obviously develop the meningitis as well as in a rare case I and mean in a uh, uh, advanced case they will develop this Waterhouse Fredrickson syndrome and patient will die. So this infection to anyone is very dangerous so we don't want to get the infection out to the family member and it, it can easily get transmitted so you need to take the take the prophylaxis and the prophylaxis drug are actually rifampicin or ciprofloxacin okay let's move to the another uh, their own brother that is nigeria gonadi another species so these are ferment glucose even nigeria meningitis is also ferment glucose but Nigeria gonadi doesn't ferment maltose and that difference meningitis from gonadi. Distinguished feature, this is the gram negative kidney beans sip diplococci. They are oxidase positive. Reservoir is obviously the human genital tract. Transmission will be obviously the sexual contact because it's the genital urinary system disease. There will be transmission through the sexual contact during the birth of the baby and sensitive to drying and cold. So during the sexual contact and birth, they will transmit it. Pathogenesis, they are pili attached to the mucosal surfaces, inhibit the phagocytic uptake, antigenic, antigenic variation that is greater than 1 million variant and that's it. this makes them very important. They have the pili that helps to the attached to the, our urethra so that even our forceful de urination also the, the bacteria doesn't wash away and also they have inhibit the phagocytosis so they inhibit our killing mechanism of our immune cell and because of that they can easily survive inside our genital tract there is one important point that its genetic pili has anti-genetic variation so there are millions of variation of this pili so they can change their pili as well their, gen their genetic variation is there because of that there is a millions of this pili variant nigeria gonadi so we doesn't develop vaccine because we don't know we we can develop vaccine against only one bacteria or least against only one strain but their patient will develop infection in another strain there are the million of strains circulating so it will not be possible for making a million of strain and then giving you a vaccine million vaccine just to prevent one disease and that this disease is actually get treated if you diagnose it with a simple one one sort of antibiotic so because of this genetic variation this vaccine of this bacteria is not possible and we do not care about the vaccination because the vaccination will be not be feasible for this infection okay and that since the vaccine is not possible that makes this organism a high yield to act in the USMLE and any board exam around the world so this is the bacteria they have genetic variation that you have to understand that you have to remember that has the 
outer membrane protein uh, OMP1 structure antigen used in the serotyping opacity antigen variation adherence they also has this hemoglobin A proteases why they have in hemoglobin A proteases because without this it will not able to invade the our mucosal membrane protective layer of hemoglobin A so if they are Nigeria meningitis were causing disease your respiratory tract a respiratory tract also has this immunoglobin A protective layer so it needs immunoglobin A to evade this Nigeria gunneri is the infection of genito urinary tract so they also need this immunoglobin A protease to invade the immunoglobin A protective layer Organism made the mucosal surface and cause inflammation, disease is gonorrhea, male urethritis, proctitis, female endocervitis, uh, PID that pelvic inflammatory disease, arthritis, proctitis, infant, if they can infect, uh, infect um, ophthalmia, rapidly leads to the blindness if on treatment, disseminated disease, arthritis and skin lesion and gono gonococcal pharyngitis. So there are a lot of, lot of diseases that they can develop and we can, let's discuss about this vignette. So Nigeria gonorrhea, they are actually a disease of sexually active patient. There will be the urethral os or vaginal discharge that is white in color, which is called the licoria. The arthritis is a possible. Neonatal ophthalmic disease will be possible because if a mother has Nigeria gonorrhea in the birth canal, then baby will come with the birth canal infection that come with the where during delivery the bacteria will carried by a baby and they can infect their eye so you need to treat that as well neonatal ophthalmia will develop and these are the gram negative diplococcus in neutrophil one important point is they are usually intracellular they are there you can see a neutrophil filled with this bacteria as well as outside also but mainly inside the neutrophil so diagnosis point of view they are intracellular gram negative diplococca in pnf that is the polymorpho neutrophil forms urethral from urethral smear Commonly diagnosed by the genetic probe that is the with an application culture on the thyr martin media. So this is nothing. This is just a modification of the chocolate agar. Initially the blood agar is made that is heated and converted into a chocolate agar and that chocolate agar is added with the antibiotic that is vancomycin, uh, BP and that is the polymyxin and nistatin and they, that culture media converted into thyr martin media. So it will easy for obtaining this organism this become a selective media so for nigeria meningitis chocolate agar for nigeria gonary thyr martinia media they are oxidase positive colony they are does not form in maltose they don't have the capsule treatment is they are saftraxone for track chlamydia trachomatis or treat with the macrolide like, like doxycycline plasmid and beta alexander produce high level of penicillin resistance so normally we think about the saftraxone in alternative doxycycline can be used and prevention can be done with the condoms and for neonates, we can give silver nitrate or erythromycin ointment in the eyes at birth. So we have already discussed the baby, well, a mother who has infected the birth canal during the delivery from the birth canal, they carry the organism and they can be present in the eye that can damage the eye and lead to the blindness. So we need to treat for with the silver nitrate or erythromycin ointment in the eyes at birth. Now let's come to our USMLE step 1 2021 microbiological section where we are discussing uh, we are on page 142 where we are discussing about the Nigeria since we have discussed the Kaplan book now come back for revision section what are the point that you need to remember the most they are gram negative diplococci you have already come to know that they metabolize glucose both metabolize glucose you also know that they produce immunoglobin a protease either they infect the respiratory tract or the genitourinary tract they need 